What's going on, virtual simulation baseball fans? Uh, MLB The Show 21, talk about a mixed bag, huh? Like my Halloween bag as a kid, had some good stuff. Had some Kit Kats, had some Snickers, and, and some Whoppers ended up in my bag. Yeah, that's right. Whoppers are an F-tier candy. We didn't get to that video, unfortunately. Um, uh, give me raisins besides Whoppers, good lord. Uh, regardless, uh, it meant its expiration point, like milk that's been sitting out too long. This game has been out for a little too long, and it's been stagnant. But there's 10 things, 10 new features, that I think would greatly freshen it up. It would smell nice and clean, not like the Axe body spray showers the middle schoolers taking after PE. Uh, it's gonna smell nice and clean, nice and fresh content and gameplay. Let me know, as always, in the comments section. What do you guys think? I asked this on Twitter. We'll talk about some of the replies also. If you can make one change to MLB 22, what would it be? You can add something, you can change something. What would you do if you were in Ramon Russell's uh, position? Uh, wouldn't, you know, what would you do if you could trade places with uh, Ramon for a day? Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you guys are new as well. And let's get on to this one. So, the first thing I want to talk about has been a hotly contested topic for all of one month about since they made the second of two gameplay changes all year, and that's the PCI sensitivity. Now, I do want to know, I believe it was Fuzzy on Twitter who had mentioned one time that he brought it up to the SDS developers, and they said they have no interest in allowing this to be a thing. Now, PCI sensitivity, of course, what I'm talking about is how far your PCI moves with your adjustments on your analog sticks. Now, before the patch, you know, one point, what, two, whatever the fuck it was, uh, it moved a lot slower and you couldn't hit the corners of the strike zone, a la why, uh, you know, Pinpoint was carving up arseholes all year, it, you know, still does, but uh, it was a lot worse. They increased the sensitivity, which is good. You can now get your PCI to those different spots on the strike zone, but it's also a lot more difficult because one very ever so slight movement could end up being right here down to right there. Uh, kind of tough, especially in Hall of Fame and Legend, of course. So what would be a good change? Allow us to have a slider a lot like how they have in FPS games to change how quick you move around and, you know, how quick you aim. Uh, so, yes, would you technically have an advantage if you were at 100 sensitivity? Yes. But it's also significantly more fucking difficult to do that than it would be with a slower PCI sensitivity. So, I think this would be a good change, perhaps, with all the... Um, you know, complaints with that patch, there's uh, consideration that they would go back on their word and maybe bring this into MLB 22, please. Moving to the DD content side. Now, this is something featured in the all illustrious, the fan favorite Electronic Arts Madden franchise. Now, I know we would all like for SDS to go defunct and Electronic Arts to just, you know, develop this game. I, I know one day we hope that's going to happen. Uh, but in seriousness, there is a feature that I would like to steal, and that is theme teams. Now, this has been uh, mauled around in the community, talked about for a little bit, and I think it's time. I think there's a great reason to do this. Why, you might ask, Gomer? Well, for this simple reason. I think back to one point in particular, which was when they dropped the... One moment I think about is the event where they dropped the... Uh, what, top 25, top 30 at the time shortstop, Ozzy Smith into the game, which was used by all the four people, uh, because of course, this card's attributes are not too favorable in any category besides like three. And what could have this card be more valuable what could make people excited for this card? Because at the end of the day, this is how it is. They can't just release Willie Mays all year. They can't just release King Griffey Jr. all year. Uh, meta cards, as we like to consider them. There are going to be guys like Ozzy Smith, which what he's good at is stuff that doesn't really matter as much in the game. Uh, except for speed. You know, hot take there. Uh, still think about that one guy, Jesus Christ, that common eats me alive who said outfield speed does not matter. Good lord, have you played this game before? Uh, anyway, uh, I digress. Gomer ramble over. Uh, what could make this card a bit more usable? 
uh, for theme teams. Now, in Madden, essentially, you are rewarded for having members of that same team that you are using in your active lineup. So uh, that would work the same way in MLB The Show as I'm proposing. And if you had an all-Cardinals team, that Ozzy Smith is probably going to be your best option at shortstop. So while it's still not a good card, you can use that to boost up the rest of your team. Your Pujols, which, funny enough, doesn't have his best card of the game. It is November. A bit of a cold right now, if you can't tell. Hopefully, my voice doesn't sound like the Joker. Hopefully you didn't click off right there. Um, anyway, uh, there are going to be some teams that are going to be better. Unless SDS does this the right way. Because if they were to look at teams like the Dodgers, teams like the Yankees, they're going to get good quick because they've had a long tenured history, very successful franchises, of course. 27 rings, believe it or not. I'm not sure if you knew that. The Yankees have won. Uh, but those teams would be better. What they could do, teams like the Rays, teams like the Diamondbacks that typically don't get as good of legend cards. Of course, the Rays, you know, with their postseason prowess, uh, you know, winning one game in the postseason this year, uh, are going to get more cards down the line. But think of the Diamondbacks. They don't really get many cards. They don't have a lot of legends, and then they don't get too many cards throughout the year. They just have to space them out. They're going to have to give Luis Gonzalez a card earlier on in the year, not wait until TA4. And they might have to wait, just like they do already with uh, some of the big endgame cards for the Yankees. Think of uh, Gehrig and Babe Ruth, which they already do. So I think theme teams would work great, and it would just encourage to use more cards. Another nitpick for content that I've had for many years, and they've done practically nothing about, is ways to differentiate cards. Now... This is an issue, in my opinion, because we do have quirks, which those affect uh, postseason cards, they affected the All-Star Series cards, and they affect Live Series, uh, I think Tops now as well, but more or less, they don't affect, like, this Eric Davis right here. And the issue with that is you run into a standstill, where a lot of cards are the exact same. The only difference is a slight swing difference, which more or less is in your head, more than anything, it's not really a huge deal. I believe Scan made a video on that. The timing is exactly the same. It, it just seems like, oh shit, I'm not hitting well with this card. The swing must suck. You know, blaming. I, I would never do such a thing, of course. It must be uh, the RNG PCI. That was probably the case why I didn't get a hit right there. Surely. Certainly. Um, but I am being realistic here. The only difference is a bit of a swing and then the name. So you'll have cards that are essentially carbon copies and it gets to the point where there is no point because there are going to be two cards where, oh, you know, the fielding might be plus two on this guy and then he has four more visions. So it's nitpicking, it's negligible differences. And then the problem is when that new card comes out and it's the exact same, why would you want to go get that card? Because you have the card right there. The only reason would be is, oh, that card plays for my favorite team or, oh, I like that guy. He's uh, one of my favorite players. So it doesn't really matter, especially if it's the same handedness. So if they add more quirks that affect gameplay, this problem could be negated. Now, what would those be? I'm not sure. Uh, truth be told, I'm not exactly Exactly sure. The quirks that do affect gameplay, think of, again, like live series, uh, breaking ball hitter. Those give you a PCI boost. It's bigger when they throw breaking balls. Night player. And these things are valuable to know. And they help add more uh, value to these cards, essentially, and make them different. And I think if they add those to all cards and add new quirks, it could be one, more fun, and two, again, help see lineup diversity and be more excited for other cards that come out and not just stick to the ones that you have. Inning programs, I just thought weren't as good this year for a variety of reasons. Uh, the main two, of course, being that one, they take longer than last time. They usually last a full month. I think it now just changed later on, like in the seventh inning program, where it only ran for three weeks. But then the problem gets to be that it's too short. Yes, they offer plenty of XP. Uh, if you truly play the game, you're practically always going to get this. That's not what I'm complaining about. Um, but what I am complaining about is them lasting four months Four weeks and the cards not being very good for the majority of the season. That was a big gripe for a lot of people is the inning program rewards would be less desirable than Team Affinity, which takes 
essentially 15 minutes to get rather than playing the conquest playing the player programs and all that shit to eventually work yourself up to that inning program which a lot of the time even if you do all the conquest and whatnot it's going to take until the end of the program so a card's already lost value and then the card's not very meta at that point because better cards have been released throughout that time so you see my issue so having that problem on top of taking out the xp reward path i think is a big reason why content felt a little stale this year a little lackluster maybe uh so i would really appreciate if they were to fix that going forward for next year uh because any programs yes they've been in the game since 19 but i think they're still good i don't think they have to change too much but they have to be better is what i'm saying that that would be my hot take they should be better a lot of things about MLB The Show do not make sense. One of which, in my opinion, is uh, pitchers, how they work. I'm going to talk about uh, essentially parallels and how you don't really get rewarded for pitchers. So in the grand scheme of things, what matters for pitchers? Stamina, Hit9, K9, and BB9. Sure, does pitch clutch matter a little bit? No, not really. <laughs> um... So you're looking at like three to four attributes and that's all you're going to get for a parallel upgrade. Why is there not a boost for control for break and a slight boost for velocity? Now, of course, I am not saying that for a parallel five, I should go from a nine or a 102 with outlier to a 107 mile an hour fastball. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking about... Why can't we make a 99 without outlier? Why can't we boost that up to outlier at parallel 5? Maybe plus 2 velocity is the highest you can get. Then control and break on each pitch should get upgraded plus 1 per parallel boost. Because at the end of the day, that's very important. Those are vital to your success as a pitcher. If I see somebody with low control like Cutter, 75 for Verlander, that isn't great, but it's not unusable. But getting that up to 80 could be the difference between me kind of being worried about that pitch and, you know, I'm confident, uh, you know, chest held high uh, when I throw that pitch right there. So, again, that just doesn't make sense to me why you don't get a boost for that. I love parallels, everything else about it, no complaints, nothing that they need to change, but you should get rewarded for that for pitchers and a slight velocity boost on top of that. Just to, even if it's one mile an hour, damn it, something. Affiliations is something I've been thinking about for a while. I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. I would love to see it added into DD. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, this isn't a foreign concept. This has been in uh, many video games before, uh, but it would be a new concept to MLB The Show. Now, what I'm talking about is, let's take ranked seasons, right? We'll get to pivotal moments in the season, such as the All-Star break, such as uh, the postseason, Field of Dreams, those kind of things, right? And what I'm essentially wanting here you'll be able to pick two sides let's say we're at the all-star break uh you can choose the american league or you can choose the national league as your affiliation and uh, let's say i pick the national league right so what my job is to do is when i go into ranked seasons i want to fill my team with national league players you build stats that say whoever hits the most home runs the national league or american league and ranked seasons play uh, you get rewards for that. So let's say the National League hits more and I pick them. I get pack rewards. I get stub rewards, that sort of shit. It's another reason to play the game and you can make this really cool. I've seen it in other games done in the past where they really brought some cool rewards out. And again, the biggest thing, it makes you want to play because it's like, fuck, I want to help my guys out. I want to help the National League uh, claim victory. Although the American League's better because the Tampa Bay Rays and the Minnesota Twins play in said league. Um, but I, I digress, you know. But I think it could be really cool. And again, you can do the same thing when it comes to the postseason. Maybe you can even expand it out to, uh, you know, more than just two options. This is just a starter. Um, and I would love to see it implemented into MLB The Show at 22. Servers would like if they worked. Uh, that would be a welcome change, huh? A pretty valuable feature to have the... You know, the feature to be able to play the damn game that you bought, right? Uh, servers have been really bad, especially as of late. Which doesn't really make sense, because less people are playing the game. You'd think it'd be the opposite. You'd think you would be 
flying by. You think you'd be getting into games before you even queue. Not the case. Um, there's been an epidemic where uh, occasionally when you hit a ground ball to second base, the game will just freeze in November in 2021 uh, that's obviously an issue that probably shouldn't be happening in a triple a game now what's the solution to this uh dedicated servers which one would think that mlb the show 21 being the third highest selling game of the year would have the funds to be able to afford uh dedicated servers especially since this is sony by the way this is not a small indie company you know the dev team and the budget's a bit bigger than the people that made among us for christ's sakes uh you would like to see some effort put into this because uh peer-to-peer -peer connection can be terrible at times it can be really really bad and it is uh, abhorrent. It is really not up to 2021 standards whatsoever uh, when it comes to online play. It's uh, prehistoric uh, for that matter. It's terrible. Uh, so servers would, you know, be nice. You know what grinds my gears? Uh, rank seasons games that typically take 40 to 45 minutes. And then there's approximately up to 10 minutes of pause time that you can accumulate if you so choose because i think you start out with about two and then you gain more after each inning i'm a busy guy i'm a dad now i have to walk my daughter so she can use the bath i have to walk my dog uh you know three times a day uh so that takes up time right there that i can't be spending waiting on uh jeff Rowe to unpause the game because uh, he's, I don't know, jerking off in the middle of a DD game because he's really proud of the uh, perfect perfects that he's be hitting. I don't know. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It's terrible. You know, yes, rank seasons takes longer than a Madden game, than a 2K game or, you know, Call of Duty, whatever, before it eventually kicks you for being idle. Um, but it's it's bad. You know, there's too much pause time, damn it. And it really really deteriorates a man it re really makes me sad so uh, if you could change that sds last but not least most importantly uh make this game fun for real i mean it is november presumably the game's going to be coming out in march it could be april like it was last year we haven't heard anything which uh, typically we do around this time, like October, November, we're going to start hearing news. Uh, of course, last year was different. Maybe that's going to be how it is from now on. We're not going to know a, a damn thing about the game until February. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. But regardless, we still have, at best case scenario, five plus months until the game is released. And I uh, honestly have... Yeah, I've found little to no interest to play the game, especially Diamond Dynasty. By uh, some act of God, I've actually found enjoyment in franchise, which is strange because that mode's about as deep as a kiddie pool. I could make, uh, you know, 90 things, new features that we need to see to get it up to uh, like 2015 franchise standards for sports games. But, um, you know... It's telling that this game has uh, significantly dwindled as far as its player base and uh, interest. Especially, like I said, it was the third highest selling game up to this point. Yeah, I'm sure Call of Duty, I'm sure Battlefield are going to eventually top it. But uh, there was still a good amount of really interesting titles, AAA games that did get released. So, um, And that's not even considering the fact that it was on Xbox Game Pass as well. Uh, so tons of people got to play this game unfortunate part is it dwindled off quicker than ever so uh something to work on and you know like i said if they add some of these features in i think that's definitely going to uh help it out fundamentally the game is not going to change too much year to year because the gameplay is what it is there you can't really change the fact that you have to pitch hit and field uh, i think that's going to be included next year hot take right there but um there is things that they could do to improve for sure uh because i think other past games have been a little bit more fun i you know i think of mlb 19 or how even last year i think uh i was enjoying a little bit more at this time but uh let me know in the comment section again what you guys think uh down below what would you guys want added do you agree with me with some of my points here and uh yeah uh more videos coming soon subscribe if you guys are new leave a like if you guys enjoy hope you guys have a great day there goes out yee